WJKS. News Watch and Sky 17. We'll take you there. From Jacksonville, it's News Watch 17. News with Jim McElroy and Debbie Ferrero. Sports with Glenn Fisher. Weather with Rufus Haper. News Watch 17, the new choice for news. I'm Jonathan Hartzer. We'll have a live Sky Team report from high above the Jazz Festival. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to this special edition of News Watch 17. We're live from the Jacksonville Jazz Festival at Metropolitan Park, and it's still, you know, as one of the largest free jazz festivals in the world. Now, what a difference a day makes. There's not a trace of the nasty weather that drenched festival goers last night and forced performances to be cut short. No, not a sign of it, and we're going to be here all evening with continuous music coverage. That's the key, that we haven't had any rain so far, and thank goodness. And right now, it is a little bit cloudy outside, but it isn't threatening by any means. So, if you feel the need to come down to the Jazz Festival, please do. The music is good. The crowd really is not what they thought it would be. And I guess there are a couple of reasons for that, Debbie. One being last night's rain. Now, Beth Campbell has been scouting out the crowd. She joins us here live and in color. Beth, how's the crowd to this time? Well, you two, I've got a question for you. What do you get when you add great jazz music, good food, good weather, and good vibrations? The answer, of course. The Jacksonville Jazz Festival, 1985. Again, it's been like Christmas in October down here this year. I think everybody's having a great time. And once again, we're seeing plenty of fans with smiles from ear to ear. What do you think? It's pretty nice. Sounds good. I love it. Here last night, got all wet. <laughs> but I was stayed until they threw us out. <laughs> Great. We're just having the best time out here, just watching all the people go by and listening to the music. And as usual, no one at the Jacksonville All That Jazz Festival is going away hungry. Whether you've got a taste for a good old all-American hot dog or maybe something like a spinach puff for a change, it's all here and a lot of it. It's great. Some of the best I've had in a long time. And area artists are also out in full force with works ranging from rag dolls to jewelry from India and everything in between. They do a good job in putting together the right types of crafts, and at the same time, they bring in not too much of the other items. <laughs> that really impresses me every year is the real way people come together down here. We've got young, old from every walk of life. It's almost like a reunion of old friends, but we also have some brand new features down here at Metropolitan Park also this year. One service I really think certain members of the family are going to enjoy. Two tents, one for kids, the other for moms and dads, are the newest additions to this year's jazz festival. Both tents are set up at the east end of the park. Ken Malone works magic with the kids at the red and white tent. He keeps their attention so parents can have a free day. The benefit of it is for me to relax while he has a point while it's fun. We can hear the music from here and we don't, you know, we can keep an eye on them and they're entertained. It gives us a break. <laughs> Every half hour, a different act takes the stage here at the kids' tent, keeping them entertained and giving them a break from the regular jazz festival. But the tent sponsor says it's not meant to be a babysitting service. We have just as many adults as we have children here. And uh, with it, I really can't say that it's a babysitting service because, no, it's not that. It's just children entertainment. The yellow tent next door nurses the needs of new moms and moms-to-be. It's very unusual to come to a festival like this and be able to nurse her privately and change her on a table rather than on benches. Both tents are open until 7 o'clock tonight and until 6 o'clock tomorrow night. At the kids' tent, I'm Laura Pirano, WJKS Newswatch 17. Also, Jim and Debbie, the police have reported absolutely no problems. Everybody's being well behaved. Earlier today, everyone was trickling in, and now they're pouring in. And by the big event when Ray Charles hit, we expected to be standing room only, but there's
there's still plenty of room, so come on down. I'm not sure that's going to be the case. Now, if you're wondering about the schedule of events, mm -hmm. we will, of course, have that for you a little bit later on. Now, the park has definitely been under siege by an armada, but they are from Friendly Shores, folks, believe me. Boats, boats, and more boats, all shapes and sizes out there right now on the St. John's River. Now, probably something in the neighborhood of 150 boats on the river. And, of course, we're all wowed by the rich, the expensive, the sleek. But as a wise man once said, uh, what kind of talent does it take to spend money? <laughs> yeah, it's truly the life. And the only complaints we've heard are about sprained pull tab fingers. But the story, this one is dedicated to the little guy, the little boats that could. They are the ones who are out there in the Goliaths. Too many boats out here, really. Uh, too much drinking going on and everything. They're doing a good job keeping the boat spaced out. They uh, haven't seen any problems at all this year. How are you enjoying the music? Music's fantastic. You can hear it just as well as up there. It ain't half the crowds. Really, those are more like water bugs skittling around out there, the water bugs, I guess. The forces of flood will grow in size as the night grows longer. And if you're getting ready to put in yourself, please take it easy, as there are a lot of folks, a lot of fiberglass on the river right now, Deb. Now, joining us live is Dr. Leonard Bowie, Director of Fine Arts at the University of North Florida, and he's also a jazz band member himself. Welcome, Dr. Bowie. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Doctor, one thing we have noticed, last year's festival as opposed to this year's festival. Last year, we had Freddie Hubbard, Phil Wood, Sarah Vaughn, a lot of individual performers. This year, we have a lot of groups. How come? Why the change? I couldn't give you an official statement on that, but it's my estimation that when you have individual performers, they can't come on stage by themselves. They have to have backup groups. To do that requires a tremendous amount of rehearsing if a professional artist is coming on and playing with the uh, individual players, backup players for the first time. That costs money. Yeah. This is a free festival. I think the leaders of this festival want to keep it free. I think it's a matter of economy and plus it is a trend now that instead of individual uh, performance, the trend now is toward groups. Okay, Dr. Bowie, you know, last year we had some real headliners, Spyro Gyro, Sarah Vaughan, et cetera, et cetera. Do you think that turnout this year is not as high, not only because of the rain last night, but because the lineup just isn't as strong as it was last year? I would hope that that's not the case. This is the first year, as you know, that they've gone to four, four nights, uh, four days. Here the four, it's been uh, one, one and a half days, you may say. So people have uh, more of a choice. Uh, last night, for instance, that was a Dixieland night. So people who really like Dixieland probably attended that over and over, as opposed to a one-day, one-time shot where they come and take a chance of hearing anything and everything. Right. Good boy, we've seen that in the last recent couple of months, I suppose, we've seen a good jazz club shut down. We have seen the only jazz radio station in town, not on the air anymore. What's the state of jazz right now? Is it healthy or yeah. are we hurting a little bit? I'm, I'm really happy that you asked that because I teach a course at the University of North Florida called All That Jazz. The idea, hopefully, is to preserve and to educate the public as to what jazz is, its heritage and its roots, and that this is one of the main uh, forces in America. Uh, and we find that people come out, they turn out to the jazz festival in large numbers, but we don't have uh, the, the places for people to go to enjoy jazz on a regular basis after the festival is over. Thank you, Doug, thank you very much. Well, thank, thank you so much. much. We now go high above Metropolitan Park to Sky Team 17 and Jonathan Hartzer. Jonathan Hartzer is up there along with Mike Kaminsky, our photographer, to try to find out what the traffic situation is right now. And what better place to be than in the sky? John? Jim and Debbie, we've been buzzing around downtown Jacksonville and haven't found any problems at all with traffic at the Jazz Festival. There was a backup earlier today on the Fuller Warren Bridge with some vehicles stalled up there, but otherwise traffic is very light around downtown Jacksonville and the festival, presumably because of the lighter turnout. Now, police say things uh, with traffic will get a little more hectic as the big headline acts come on, but tonight they don't expect a big crunch, so all routes and bridges into downtown Jacksonville should be working just fine. Now, enough on traffic. We want to give you yet another look uh, at, at the biggest reason we go live up here, the spectacular view of Festival Park and the Jazz Festival. You look down there, uh, it looks like things are only about half full from up here. There are dozens of boats. It's a beautiful scene, a beautiful day in downtown Jacksonville. Now, if you've been staying away from the Jazz Festival because of the crowds, this might be your year to come because, as we've said, it is a little lighter and uh, it, things will get more crowded tonight, uh, but if, if the weather does hold up, it should be beautiful and, and not too crowded. 
All right, thank you, John. What a sight that is from up there, the crowd and just the awe of it all. Well, with Dixieland in the background, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we'll go to Bert Rosell, who's in the studio on the south side, to find out what else has happened today. We're also going to tell you why eating out of the jazz festival is better than ever. Stay tuned. Got a question about the weather? Win Dixie's got the answer. Call 641 WDWD and get the latest weather information from me, Rufus Hafer. Brought to you by Win Dixie, the beef people. We're coming to you live from Metropolitan Park, Jacksonville, and all that jazz. Now, our coverage will continue. Again, we'll have the lineup for tonight. What's still to come? Ray Charles, of course, the headliner. But for right now, let's go back to the studio. That's where Bert Rosell is and find out what's happening today. Bert? Okay, Jim. In the news tonight, the largest cocaine bust in St. John's County history is being wrapped up by police tonight. Officers confiscated more than a half million dollars worth of pure cocaine and $40,000 in cash this morning at a St. Augustine motel. Two North Carolina residents, 21-year-old Daniel Davis and 19-year-old Elizabeth Lyons, face charges of trafficking in cocaine. The couple was arrested on a trespassing charge five days ago, and a subsequent investigation turned up the drugs and money this morning. More than 7,000 abortions are supposedly performed in Jacksonville every year. This morning, hundreds of people throughout Northeast Florida protested that statistic at area hospitals. Members of churches of every denomination marched in front of three city hospitals and one Southside clinic as part of a nationwide protest against abortions. One Protestant minister took his congregation to Memorial Hospital. And uh, we are obviously saying here that we believe that human life is precious. And we believe that abortion is wrong and that the lives of unborn children should be seen as part of the rest of society and therefore precious. I don't think that um, people should actually kill children. I mean, it's just like murdering unborn children. One group of protesters tried to deliver their anti-abortion protest on the doorstep of Baptist Medical Center. They were ordered off hospital grounds and continued their protest on the street. A great deal of consumer concern tonight over the recall of some flavor-rich milk and ice cream. Some of it may be contaminated with wash water used in the everyday cleaning of the plant. The milk under voluntary recall is dated October 8th and 10th. It was packaged at plant number 12044. Square half gallons of ice cream, sales code 131, and round half gallon, sales code 21, are also involved in this recall. If you have any of these products, return them to the store of purchase for refund. Should these products be consumed, they may cause nausea. Well, the father of a teenage girl killed in a fiery crash atop the Butler Boulevard bridge is holding the Jacksonville Transportation Authority responsible for his daughter's death. Edmund Cooney filed the suit against the JTA yesterday, claiming that improper maintenance of the bridge led to the accident that killed his daughter, Laura. Since that accident last December, a group of citizens and Mayor Jake Godbold have asked the JTA to install a concrete barrier along the center line of the narrow bridge. Instead, the agency voted to install plastic candlestick barriers. Nassau County Commissioners are trying to decide what they'll do about their courthouse, which recently failed a state fire inspection. The fire safety survey cites the lack of a sprinkler system and inadequate fire escapes in the 94-year-old building. County officials already face a 120-day deadline to begin other improvements ordered by Chief Circuit Judge John Santora. They don't know yet whether they'll get or where they'll get the $300,000 for those repairs. That's the top of the news on this Saturday evening. Now we send you back live to Metropolitan Park and the Jacksonville Jazz Festival 85. Debbie? I'm sure you can hear everything is heating up at the Jacksonville Jazz Festival. Well, you're not only going to get great entertainment, but you're going to get great eating out as well. Anything and everything you desire, from Italian to Greek to Chinese American and Southern fried, you're going to find it here. Eating at the festival is much more enjoyable this year. In the search for quality control, Channel 7 has a private firm out of Jacksonville Beach handling the whole kit and caboodle. And to make sure everything looks good, the president of Hero Concessions awarded $500 to the most attractive booth today. We have nonprofit organizations running all of our tents, and we pay them a, a percentage. And uh, we told the one that decorated their tent the best that we would give a $500 cash prize. So all of them decorate with their plants, and some of them come with 
some, uh, some kind of crazy different things which add to the fair of the festival. As for the variety of food, same as last year, but one major addition, a Belgian waffle stuffed with vanilla ice cream and topped with strawberries, if you so wish. Civic groups manning the stands get 10% of their gross, and the festival gets a cut, too. So please, leave the coolers and food at home, spend your money out here, and keep the Jacksonville Jazz Festival free, too. Why do you do this to me? I mean, I look at all the food, and you know we'll blow about $15 on the stuff, and I'll grow... Two more belt loops, right? At any rate, the Jazz Festival now, the schedule for the rest of the evening. Let's take a look at what's going on tonight. Beginning at 7.45, the winner of Thursday night's Jazz Piano Competition will sit in with tonight's show pianist Ross Tompkins and his trio. At 8.10, Miami's Tito Puente will convert the St. John's into the Caribbean. At 9.15, the Bill Davis Trio will warm you up for the man, Ray Charles, on stage at 9.45. And the fireworks are supposed to begin at 11 o'clock. We, of course, will be back on the air at 11 this evening. And the fireworks, sometimes they run behind a little bit. So we have a little treat in store for you. If you're going to be home tonight watching the broadcast at 11 o'clock, a special treat, a special way to see the fireworks. Can't wait. But anyway, you know this, the Major League Baseball season is going right down to the wire. We're going to be going to Fish, who joins us live here at the park. Also, Alan, who has the scores back at the desk in a moment. Back again live at Metropolitan Park, celebrating Jacksonville, and they're celebrating in St. Louis tonight with good reason. I wonder why. You're going to tell us, aren't you? Well, you know, the baseball races we've been talking about all week long, they're not just about settled. The Cardinals have clinched, Toronto has clinched, the Royals can clinch tonight, and we'll have all that and more a little bit later on. You know, of course, the big story is in uh, Baton Rouge tonight, where the Florida Gators will put their number 11 ranking on the line against 8th-ranked LSU, probably a lot of Gator fans stopping in New Orleans along the way for a little... Uh, jazz music and hopefully some jazz tonight if there's one thing that works against any team playing down there uh, is the stadium the tigers den better known as death valley a lot of teams have gone in there and come away losers lsu has won 73 percent of its games in that stadium but gator players they're not worried about that one thing about it when you go into a, a opponent's place like that you got to have a lot of confidence in your team and uh, i think that's what what carried us along last year and, and this year through the first game um, we really have confidence in ourselves. When in LSU, we know that they're gonna have like 90,000 plus people, and they got that big tiger right there, and they got a, uh, I mean, shoot, it's a lot of you know people jumping up, hollering, and that that excites me. I know it excites the whole team too. Uh, we're gonna get the crowd on our side, and the thousand fans that we're gonna have there, they'll be the ones doing the yelling, and we'll feel just like home. I always like going out of town. Only the worst thing to me is flying on the airplane. I don't mind playing in LSU. All Mississippi State just flying on that airplane. Adrian would fight Larry Holmes as long as he didn't have to go on an airplane and go there. He took the plane ride. He'll be there tonight, and it's going to be an outstanding game. If you get one of those fortunate people to have one of those satellite dishes, forget it, because you're not going to see it. It will not be up in the bird tonight. We'll have some highlights of it at 11 o'clock. Let's go back to the studio now, and Alan will update us on all the scores, highlights, and the baseball races. Alan? Thanks a lot, Glenn. Have a good time out there. We're going to try to update on a wild one going on. Number one ranked Iowa found out quickly just how tough it is to stay on top in college football these days. They are in the fourth quarter. Late in the fourth quarter, Michigan State can upset Iowa if Iowa cannot pull off a touchdown in their final drive. If I get anything on that, I will pass it along. Late, late in the fourth quarter, Michigan State trying to knock off number one. Number two, Oklahoma, no problem today. Ohio State was upset by Illinois, 31-28. Oklahoma State beating Tulsa, 25-13 today. It was Michigan, number seven, rolling over Wisconsin. Arkansas shutting out TCU. Nebraska rolling again over New Mexico. Tennessee survives a scare against Wake Forest. Play of the day in college football. Unfortunately, the team that pulled it off got stopped. Mike Holt of South Carolina, watch him. Almost tackled two or three times. Now he's in the end zone. He unloads the ball. Watch the wobber. It's bounced up. Another one of his players gets it, and he's going to take off for an 80-yard touchdown, and that was Raynard Brown for the only Carolina touchdown of the day. Pittsburgh had total domination. Anthony Brown here scores up the middle. Pittsburgh rolls 42-7. Miami beat East Carolina. 27 to 15 today. Notre Dame, more problems for Coach Jerry Faust for Notre Dame as they are having troubles with Air Force. North Carolina losing big to Georgia Tech today. Syracuse shutting out Howard Schnellenberger's Louisville Cardinals. And a couple of more scores. FAMU beat Albany State 31 to 20. And it was Georgia Southern shutting out Tennessee Tech 34 nothing. 
Well, a whole season full of running, gunning, scrapping, and clawing finally paid off for the St. Louis Cardinals this afternoon. The ugliest mascot in baseball was a happy bird. Bottom seventh, Cubs uh, right here in the card. Cesar Cedeno put it uh, out of reach there with a home run. Cards went up 5-1. Let's look at the score. St. Louis winning the National East today, 7-1. Montreal losing and uh, winning, it didn't matter. Though the Cards play Wednesday, 8:30 at Los Angeles in the American League. California beat Texas. Kansas City can clinch tonight if they win. And in the American East, well, it's all over for the Yankees. The Jays clinch. Toronto will be hosting uh, the team that wins the West Tuesday at 8:30 p.m. And we'll be back with more from the Jazz Festival and wherever else right after this. Oh, you want to update that score? Iowa has just scored. They lead Michigan State 34-31 with uh, just seconds left in the game. We're back right around the end. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you, Fish. Last night was just terrible. A lot of people coming to the park to have fun, but it was a thorough washout. But today, a different story. The sun really isn't out. There are some clouds, but it isn't that bad, and it doesn't look like it's going to rain. But we'll find out the specifics from Rufus following the break. Give me a break is pushing laughter to the limit. When Nell Carter asks questions, Why is everybody always picking on me? reveals secrets. <laughs> and puts the sizzle into Saturday night. It's like a heat wave in my heart. Nell Carter stars in Give Me a Break, Saturdays at 9 on WJKS TV. If you were at the Jazz Festival last night, you know there were big problems out here at Metropolitan Park. A violent thunderstorm dumped inches of rain on the free concert, washing it out. As jazz fans made a run for their cars, some found them in waist-deep water. Parking lots filled up with water, causing cars to stall. And at least 30 cars got stuck, some with water up to the steering wheels. What a mess. Yeah, that was so sad because those people came out there to have a wonderful time and it just everything broke loose. But today is a different story. Rufus, Big difference. It, it is, and the crowds are a little bit slow, and I think it might be people are expecting some rain or they're a little leery. Don't worry about any rain. The cold front's already passed through, and that's why it's kicking up so much wind. It's, uh, the wind's around the northwest, and it's a very dry air. It's kind of messing up my hair a little bit, but really, it's a pretty nice night in Jacksonville. We're going to see those temperatures dropping dramatically over the next uh, 12 hours, really dropping down to the middle 50s before the night is over. But we're looking for the uh, clouds to also clear out. No threat of any rain. That's the good news. We do have a shot now from Sky Team 17 way up there in the air. 86 degrees in Jacksonville at this time at the airport. 86 also at Jacksonville Beach, St. Augustine, 87. Kingsland, Georgia, 84. So uh, temperatures are still pretty warm at this hour, but it is drying out. Look at the humidity, already down to 55%. Barometer is steady at 29.88 inches. That will be rising over the next couple of hours. Start rising and be rising all during the day tomorrow as dry, high pressure builds in. Winds be west to northwesterly right now at 16 miles per hour, indicating that the cold front is south of Jacksonville. Our winds have shifted to northwest. That's bringing some drier and eventually some cooler air into the Jacksonville area. The high today, 80 five degrees actually at the airport they had a high of 87 so that's still well above the normal high of 83 lowest morning is down to a mild 72 and temperatures have been really rebounding from that uh, very warm start you can see the cold front uh, on the close-up view of skywatch color satellite cold front bringing a lot of clouds and a few showers downstate across central and north florida none in jacksonville the showers spread on through earlier during the day the cold front can be seen banding off the Atlantic seaboard on this broader view, zooming out on the whole country, clear skies from Georgia all the way back to Texas. The clouds across southern Georgia are now dissipating as the cold front slides on down south. Still lots of clouds over the Great Lakes region and the Ohio Valley. The weather today has been on the cold side. Look at the high pressure system building over the southern and central plains. It's just nothing but a beeline cold front bringing cold air down across the Great Lakes region, cool air all the way down to the central Gulf Coast states, sunny, dry weather across much of the country behind the front. Still some showers you can see on radar there up and down the eastern seaboard. 
Now, highs today were on the cold side, especially across the northern tier of states, only into the mid 40s. 46 degrees, a high today in International Falls, Minnesota, 45 in Bismarck, North Dakota, 47 degrees in Sault Ste. Marie, Minneapolis. Look at that. Not only up to 49 degrees for the high, 59 degrees in St. Louis. Temperatures moderating down the Southland, 70 degrees in New Orleans, and 85 degrees in Gainesville. All those temperatures will be cooling off. First coast tomorrow, we're looking for the cold air to continue just filtering in. It's not going to be really cold, but just a whole a lot cooler with a front well south of Jacksonville, northwesterly winds, highs in mid 70s, and lots of sunshine. That's good news. Well, my forecast calling for just a, a lot of sunshine with that. So we'll see a nice mild daytime temperatures and lows tonight dropping down to those cool readings. The uh, low tonight dropping to the uh, 54 degree mark under mostly clear skies. High tomorrow only up to 76 degrees. Much cooler, clearing skies later on tonight and still breezy conditions. The low at the beach, 57. The low in town, 54. So a lot cooler. The chance of rain will rain at 0% all the way through the remainder of the weekend. Winds be northwest and northerly at 15 miles per hour. And so that means more the way of dry air. The Rufus factor on the scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give tomorrow a 9. Long range, 54 degrees Sunday morning and a high of 74, mostly sunny, 58 degrees on Monday. Clouds increasing by Monday afternoon, but that's after the weekend, so who cares? <laughs> and today's Rufus weather picture, there you have it. Uh, nice little rainbow and the sun shining. That was sent in by Betsy Rowland, 10 years old. You believe this beautiful weather? It's no just in time. No rain. Right. That's right. We watch out here. All right. Now, let's take a quick traffic check. Let's find out what's going on in the bridges and elsewhere. Sky Team and John Archer. John? Jim and Debbie, just since we talked to you last, it seems to have gotten a little more crowded down there at the Jazz Festival, but traffic is still moving very well downtown. You can probably come to the festival on any bridge or downtown street without much delay at all. There may be a little congestion at the Hart and Matthews Bridge exits, but overall traffic and parking look very good tonight, and from up here it looks like a beautiful evening for the Jazz Festival. We recommend you all come on down. Then when we come back, more from Jacksonville and all that jazz. Stay tuned. Thank you. 